Hey guys, so I am here today to make another video in a very small and very weird niche series that I do sometimes called book to doc reviews. And what that means is that I watch the documentary and I also watch the book the documentary is based on or vice versa. And I compare and contrast the different versions and talk about these different mediums. I've had so much fun with this in the past. I've done them on I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. I've done them on Soul of America by John Meacham, some history books on the Romanoffs and the Plantagenets. So there is a small uh, playlist where you can go and check those out. But today I will be talking about The Family by Jeff Charlotte. And I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name. I watched the documentary and that is not a piece of information that I retained. So in case you're wondering what in the world is The Family, The Family is a book by Jeff Charlotte who investigates religion in America. And it is about this semi-secret, I suppose you could say, when Jeff Charlotte wrote the book, he considered it a secret organization of fundamentalist kind of Christians who are not just a church, they're not, you know, a prayer group. They are a, at this point, global network of powerful people who all kind of buy into this idea of what Jeff Charlotte calls Jesus plus nothing. This is a really bare bones version of Christianity. He talks about going to one of their houses and being given a book that's literally just the only parts of the Bible that are Jesus and that's what they read and talked about. But this is something that is connected on a very national political level. Members of both parties have been members of this organization and they are the founding force behind the National Prayer Breakfast. Really interesting and a really, for me, interesting intersection between politics and religion. And if you saw my last or one of my last supplemental videos, I mentioned that I'm reading some books with a friend about Christianity and evangelical Christianity specifically in America and she is very focused on religion. I'm interested in politics and so this was kind of like my my book of interest. So that book was originally published in 2008. This is important because the documentary that was put out came out in 2019. So there's a fairly significant gap between the two that will factor into this. The book is also about 450 pages, over just over 450 pages, and the documentary is five roughly 50 minute episodes. I watched it on Netflix, that's where you can currently find it. I don't know if it is available on other streaming services. So the way that Jeff Charlotte gets interested in the family is an interesting story. It's he was trying to help a friend whose brother, she believed, had gotten involved in a cult and she sent Jeff, a friend, to investigate what was going on with this guy. And Jeff had been very interested in religion. I was pseudo-religious himself. He was brought up um, partly Jewish. And this friend invited him to this house called Ivanwald and Jeff kind of thought that it would be a lark and just to kind of see what was going on and it turned out to be one of the foundational moments of his career as a religion writer in America. Because this is how the book is built, this is where his knowledge comes from, it may surprise some readers that when you're reading the book really only the first chapter or so deals with Jeff's time in Ivanwald. It's not a huge portion of the book and after that it moves into not just the history of the family, the organization, but the history of Christianity and evangelical Christianity, fundamental Christianity in America. So it starts off with a very strong memoirish chapter, Jeff Charlotte, is a incredibly vivid writer, which works out well when he's doing something that's a little bit more memoir style. And as it moves into the history part, kind of begins to, for me, cause some slight frustration because I'm like, okay, you don't need to turn a pithy phrase. <laughs> Just give me the information, okay? 
But anyway, he goes and he talks about, you know, the religions that were brought over from England, uh, Jonathan Edwards. He then talks about the man who founded the organization that became the family, um, Abram Verrede, and how the organization, how he was kind of converted to this version of Christianity and why he thought something like the family would work and was needed in America. The idea being that God chooses powerful men to rule. These men need to give themselves, and I do mean men, these men need to give themselves completely over to Jesus and Jesus will guide their hand. And so he built up this organization. When he died, he passed it on to a man called Doug Coe. And Doug Coe is interesting because he really globalizes the family and he has been on the hot seat for doing kind of like foreign affairs for the government without an actual government mandate. And also he is friends or considers brothers of the family some of the worst dictators in you know countries all around the world the idea being that you know doesn't matter what they've done if we can all come together under the name of jesus then um, we can all form this brotherhood but of course there's some very serious questions of morality there after going through all of that there are then some chapters on specific cultural changes for the family and how they relate to Christianity as a larger whole and how, again, this has evolved over time. One of my favorite chapters was the one on history and rewriting our history through a fundamentalist lens and where they draw inspiration from or who they consider to be American heroes that are not necessarily in the mainstream, the homeschooling movements, since I was homeschooled. It's all very interesting. But it's also a lot and you may have gotten that from what I was saying. So there's a huge section in the middle where I got really bored and it popped up at the end and then the conclusion was very like trying to go back to like a literary style of writing that didn't work for me. It didn't really sum up the argument really well and it kind of fell flat. You definitely get the sense that the family is part of this really, really powerful movement we need to be aware of. But the book itself is really rocky, it's very long, and it could have done with some editing. And of course, like I said, it was published in 2008. So the senators, the powerful men that the book mentions, some of them are not in government anymore, some of them are dead. And it's not updated to anything past 2008. The documentary is a different story having been made or released in 2019. And what it does is it cuts out a lot of the chaff. <laughs> so you get this really, I would say almost theatrical opening of Jeff's time at Ivanwald. There is some, you know, reenactments with actors of what that looked like. And then you just go into the history of the family with Abram Verrede. There's some minimal Christian culture stuff, but it's very focused on the family itself. Physical impact that it has on Washington, the spaces it occupies, the dictators that it has talked to or other world leaders, the National Prayer Breakfast, and then, of course, leading up through, you know, Trump's election and the strong role that it played there. So that is stuff that you're obviously not going to get in the book. The book doesn't go that long. And I think it also streamlines a lot of the arguments the book makes and keeps them very focused and relevant. So with that being said, it definitely holds on to the kind of overly written style of some of the parts of the book. Like I said, some of the reenactments, Jeff Charlotte's voice over, you know, slow-mo men playing football. Like, that's a lot. <laughs> you can ignore those parts of the documentary if that's not for you. It's not for me either. But it just has a clearer vision. So if you're looking for which one of them to engage with, it depends on what kind of person you are. If you just want the immediate cultural history and relevance of the family 
what it is, where it came from, how it impacts our life and politics today, the Netflix documentary is where you want to stay. However, where the family fits into our larger historical context and some of the larger cultural battles that are taking place and how the family interfaces with other versions of Christianity, you're not going to get that so much in the documentary and you will want the book for that. So if you're me, I needed to do both. I wanted to understand both and I wanted to get the information from both even if the book was slow. So it depends on how much time you feel like investing, how interested you are in the topic, and what you're looking to understand. Neither is perfect, but both are interesting. And I'm so glad that I randomly stumbled across the family on Netflix. I personally feel like their algorithm is getting a little bit not great for me. And so when this popped up, I was like, oh, what is this? And I just happened to click on it and it led me to the book and that's how I entered this topic. So thanks Netflix for that. I guess do click on some of the weird looking thumbnails. They may be not what you think. If you have watched the Netflix show, if you have read the book, you have your own thoughts and feelings, you know, I watched and read and sometimes it's very different for people who read than watch. So if that was your experience, let me know. I just, I really love reading books and watching the documentaries and seeing what they include and what they don't and if they make it better or not. And this is two for two actually because the I'll Be Gone in the Dark documentary was also in its own way better than the book. And that's really exciting because I love that people are really taking documentaries are giving them multiple episodes and really investing in them. I love documentaries. So I love, even if it's a bit much in the family, the theatrical quality of it and just the overall quality in general. So more of that, please. If you have recommendations, I'll also take those. All right, guys, that's it for me today. Thanks. Bye.